Good Sunday morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee along with my colleague John North. I'm John Becker and we are here to talk elections, not just one, but two. We had one back in August and we're going to have one in November. Chris Davis is the administrator of elections in Knox County, kind enough to lend his time to this table and we welcome you back to the broadcast. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I'm going to introduce our panel. Susan Richardson Williams is a Republican and runs her own PR firm. Good to have you. Good morning, John. Don Bosch is a Democrat, runs his own law firm. Good morning. Nice to have you here as well. We're going to talk first about the August election and start with a graphic, if we could, that lets you know just who voted in this election. Okay, look at this. 303,000 plus could vote in the election. 56,795 did. To simplify, that means out of every 10 voters who could cast a ballot, two did. John North? Yeah, that's not very good, Chris. And we were. Um, oh, don't you, blame it on Chris. Chris. You've been trying to do better. You've been. No, no. You've been banging on this drum for a long time in terms of it's great to have people register, but our turnout's just not been good. Um, and but that actually turned out lower, I think, maybe even than many of us thought. Well, we turned out 60,000 in March, and after that I thought, okay, we have yeah. a U.S. Senate primary, a U.S. House primary, seven county commission seats, four school board seats. Yeah. I thought surely it will turn out better, but even back in early July, as we were preparing in earnest for the August election, what we saw was three out of every four phone calls to our office were about the November election. I want to get registered to vote. I want an absentee ballot. They were just totally bypassing this August election, and, and there were many people that told us, I don't really have an interest in voting for that. I want to vote for president. Mm -hmm. And you know, while we're, we'll take any voters we can get, obviously, uh, as, as someone, number one, we're spending tax dollars to prepare for these elections. And number two, uh, these candidates, we think, deserve those votes, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. And so it's very disheartening when one out of every five voters casts a ballot, and most were just even, they weren't even aware there was an election. It's kind of also indicative of something that we've been hearing about the state of Tennessee for a long time, which is that turnout is also bad for the state of Tennessee. Very much so. And it's and we saw that statewide, obviously. You know, once again, U.S. Senate primary, U.S. House primaries all across the state, state house primaries all across the state. Everybody got to vote in those. We had here in Knox County seven county commission seats. You have five, I think, five new, excuse me, five new uh, county commissioners, excuse me, uh, four new school board members. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's disheartening. You know, we had one person back in March who lost by 12 votes. And in that particular race, it was a primary. There were 4,200 ballots cast where they didn't vote in that race. 4,200 people didn't vote in that race. 13 of them could have made a difference. And that, I'm sure, is very disheartening for the candidates. And I will tell you for my workers, and for me, it's also very disheartening. I want to move to another graphic just about who votes. We hear a lot about getting the young vote out. Who voted in the August election? You see it there. Guess who has the biggest slice of the pie? <laughs> Age 55 plus. Look at young voters. 18 to 34, the smallest slice of that pie. Everybody talks about the youth. I'm so old that I remember when you when you were 18, you could get to vote, and there was such great excitement, and that was 1972, I think, so it was a long time ago. It's just not really kind of developed into something where they're a force to be reckoned with. Now, they might disagree with me, and maybe this year for the presidential race, they will be. We don't know. We always say that. Yeah, we, we talk to a lot of folks who want to do voter registration drives. They want to get out the vote. They want to get people registered. And I've made the assertion for a long time now that while that's important, we want to get people registered, obviously, we have plenty of people registered. We can look at those graphics right. and tell that's that right. they need to get to the polls. Right. And for many people, particularly, and I, have, um, I say this as a parent of a 21 and almost 19-year-old uh, and, and for all their friends, I'll, quite often their way of expressing their voice is social media, is getting out there and sharing things on TikTok or Twitter or whatever the, the app of the day is, Instagram, uh, but yet getting them to the polls sometimes is a challenge. I don't think it'll be as big a challenge in this election because everybody is really fired up about this. About the uh, November election. The November election, yes, but, but, but you can see in most elections they're not showing up. We'll get to the November election in the next block, but first, Don and Susan, yeah. any other questions so, about what we learned in August? Chris, the, the elections that are really super low turnout, the, the two out of ten voters, tend to be elections that are more hyper-partisan, meaning Tennessee is a red state. We have two uh, Republican U.S. senators. We have uh, uh, super majorities in both houses that are Republican. We have a Republican governor. Do you think that hurts 
voter participation because people think, you know, if if they're on one side or the other, my vote really isn't either needed or going to count. I certainly think that that plays a role. That when you don't have competitive races, we hear that at the election commission all the time because we do ask people, why don't you vote? Why didn't you vote in this election? And quite often, that's one of the reasons we hear is there's a lack of competitive races. I don't think anything's going to change. Uh, we, we hear that more than, more than frankly than I want to, and I think it's a good thing just from a participation perspective that we do have more candidates expressing an interest in a, in a run for office. It's more competitive now on the county and state level than it's been really even when you started. Oh, certainly. In the last 12, 13 years, it's easily the most competitive. I can remember many races. You go back 10 years ago, you wouldn't even see a challenger on the ballot. Right. You don't see that very often now. Susan, yeah. any questions about August? Well, the only thing I would say was 56 percent of the folks that cast their ballot in August were Republican primary and 44 percent in the Democrat primary, mm -hmm. just like you were just now saying. Yeah. That's, that's changed dramatically since I've lived in Knoxville 30-something years. Yeah. When I came here, it was what, 60, probably 66? Probably 63, 37, yeah. 20, 37, yeah. something the 30s, like that. For yeah, sure. yeah I will, I'll give you one, one race that I go back to. You go back 10 years ago. There was a race for, um, I guess that would have been Chancellor, between uh, Eddie Pridemore and I believe it was Daryl Fansler. Daryl Fansler. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Eddie, Eddie Pridemore got 57%, give or take. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pridemore, excuse me, uh, Fansler got 43%. Yeah. And I thought that's about as far as you can really go. That's about as low as that threshold will yeah. go now, 57, 43. Now yeah. we're seeing that right there. Yeah, that was that was an outlier 10 years ago. I don't know that that's an outlier now, unfortunately. We're going to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee. When we come back, you'll see a graphic that John North requested that has our voting history in presidential elections. Does it tell us anything about what will happen in November? Back with that right after this.